As you probably know, I managed to come second in WGP Nagoya with none other than my beloved Eva deck. And today we're going to be taking a look at a deck profile for the deck list. Now, I already made a video talking about why I picked the deck and how I made this decision to play the deck at WGP Nagoya as well as WGP Yokohama. In WGP Nagoya, I came second and in Yokohama, sadly, we lost in the Swiss rounds, not making it out of the actual, you know, main tournament and having to play in the side events. But even then, this was still the best decision, I think, for me because of how well this deck is managed up into the card meta and also just i think how unknown the deck was going into nagoya and how i think now going forward the deck will become more and more known throughout the weeks to come especially for those of you playing in the english format i think it's going to be a completely different experience because the information is kind of already going to be out there by extent of me covering it i suppose and you've had a lot more time to look at the japanese results and see what's actually good here and what is topping and so i think for my fellow eva mains it's going to be an even bigger uphill climb compared to what i had to go through in nagoya but even then let's Let's go over it and get into the deck profile and of course using this lovely Rotom deck box that I think is very fitting considering this is sort of the researcher's deck. So getting into it, let's open it up and get into the list itself. We're going to first go through the ride deck and set aside the main deck on the side. We'll go through the ride deck in ascending order, starting off with the starter. This is the only Eva whose SP I do not have because of course this one is pretty hard to come by because of course you can play it in any brand gate deck. But it's important that you run the grade 0 Eva because you do need her for the grade 1's effect. Moving into the grade one's effect we have the grade one eva she is a glitter very important because of obfuscate of course and her skill is when she rides over the grade zero eva then you can search your deck for up to one research card and add it to your hand and then shuffle your deck going to the grade two it does the exact same thing it's a glitter and when it rides over the grade one you can search your deck for a research card reveal it add it to your hand and shuffle your deck so the combination of the grade one and the grade two essentially allow you to thin out two cards just by riding up which is really really strong because the deck needs to have have at least three research orders set by turn three and throughout their entire game basically the ride line already lets you find two of them which means that through the mulligan that you're doing you need to basically find one more and so basically as long as you mulligan for that one research order you're basically going to be set to pilot the deck so this is a very very good ride line that i wouldn't change whatsoever because of course it coherently works with what the deck wants to do and then of course it feeds into what the grade three does which is of course the grade three eva who of course has persona right is a glitter unit and has two other skills the first is actually really, really important. I mean, both skills are very important, but the first one allows you to, once per turn, count cost one and look at the top cards of your deck equal to the amount of research orders that are in your order zone. And then you choose one card from among them and add it to your hand without showing it to your opponent, which is a very important point, and then put the rest to the bottom of your deck in any order. And now even if you put triggers to the bottom of your deck into your, you know, in any order, it doesn't really matter because of the second skill, which says when she attacks, you can count cost one and soul cost one, and then search your deck for an obscure named card which is really nice because it feature proofs the upcoming obscurate in set eight and then you search for one you call it to a rear guard circle and then you shuffle your deck if you don't have it in your deck you can also search it from hand which is a very important ruling this is actually on the official website where if you would use her effect you can first search for the deck go through the entire deck and say that there's no target and then if you have one in hand call it from hand after that so you still get to shuffle your deck basically the reason why this is is because both the deck and the hand are private zones that your opponent does not have the privy of just checking whenever they want to and there is a specific q a on the japanese website that says this is possible and therefore because the rules allow you to do it you should do it so even if you know there's no obscure in the deck you can still attack with her to just look through the deck and shuffle your deck in case you put like the over trigger or some crits to the bottom just to get them back up there on top of your deck and then call the obscure from your hand so basically what this ride line does and why i picked it is because together with all three cards you are essentially taking one card out of your deck on turn one another one on turn two and then on turn three you're taking out two cards per turn because using the first skill to take out stuff like perfect guards bubble mines as well as other things or persona rides if you need them or more orders like anything that is not a trigger you're usually going to be taking and then the second skill takes out an obscurate from your deck so basically you thin one two four cards out of your deck by turn three. You've then thinned out six cards out of your deck by turn four, eight cards by turn five, etc. So that is very, very powerful because thinning out that many cards that are not triggers from your deck means that you are just going through your deck very, very quickly and you're making it so that your trigger chances are going up and up and up, which is one of the strengths of this deck compared to some other decks. It's kind of like Gravidia, which then thins out the meteors out of the deck to raise the trigger chances, except here you're pinpoint searching for specific things and you 
thin out the orders from your deck just by using the ride light in the first place. So that is the ride deck on its own. I think it deserved quite a bit of attention because of how good it is. And then of course we complete the, you know, ride deck with the three extra copies of Eva in the main deck because this is a Persona ride deck. It does not run any grade fours. You want to Persona ride as much as you can, but Persona riding is not as important as setting an order. Setting orders is the reason why this deck can play the long game and why this deck can actually just fight until the very end until it has like four or five cards in deck. And it can basically play the long game against so many different matchups, whether that is Prison or Gravidia. Nirvana is the only one that kind of gives you a problem because they draw cards very aggressively thanks to arcs. But being able to thin out so many cards and keep setting orders and reactivating a bunch of effects is very powerful. So we do have Eva out the way now, of course. Persona writing is very important. But next, let's talk about Mr. Obscudate. So Obscudate, I'll just bring him up on his own first, just to talk about his effects. He has a few really good effects, and he is, of course, one of the most important cards in the entire deck. His first effect says when he attacks, if you have a set order in your order zone, he gets plus 5k power. And then if you have three or more set orders in your order zone, he gets plus 10k power. So he's going to be a 23k attacker even without Persona Ride, which is actually pretty huge because if you're going first, if you put up a 8k boost behind him, he is swinging for 31 on turn 3 while your opponent's on a 10k grade 2. And even then, if you swing with him alone, he's a 23k attacker on your opponent's grade 3 as well, which is also very good. Secondly, of course, if you have an Eva Vanguard, this has Glitter Eva, can be 1, 2, or 0, 1, 2, or 3 Eva, then he gets these abilities, which is the first one is that when he's placed on Rearguard Circle by an effect, then if you have three or more research cards in your order zone, for that turn he gets a crit. This is a very important wording because it says when placed by an effect. What that means is that, of course, when you place it by the Grade 3 Eva's effect, it will proc and he will get the extra crit, that's the main purpose of it. But for example, if you were to call it from something like a prison, this counts as calling it due to an effect, therefore he gets the crit. So if you go first against prison and they use the decide pink to tell you to imprison a card from hand, you give them this obscudate and then the next turn you set your third order and then free this by soul blasting one and that allows you to gain the crit immediately and thus you have two obscudates lined up from the prison for example. You go crit two obscudate, crit two obscudate, attack with Ava for one crit to call another crit two obscudate and then they risk the, the chance of you checking a crit on Ava and thus basically getting blown out of the water. So that is why obscudate is so good and of course we are playing multiple copies and that's not all. We talked about the crit side, but there is one more effect which says this unit on Rear Guard Circle and Guardian Circle gains Intercept and 10k Shield. This 10k Shield is incredibly strong because there is not a lot of high guard value in Overdress in that many decks. And specifically, 10k Shield is pretty hard to come by and having a card that guards for 10k Shield is really, really strong because when your opponent's poking for 18k power or something like that, it is much easier to guard. Intercept is also very nice because thanks to the Grade 1 order that we're going to take a look at, the intercept is good, you intercept it away, then you get it back next turn. So, obviously it is a 4 of, it has to be a 4 of, it is the best attacker in your deck, and you absolutely need it. Now let's take a look at the orders, which we're playing 8 of, well, technically 9, including the Blitz. The first one, of course, is Jiken Dai Seiko, which is like a successful experiment, or something along those lines in English. It has one effect, but it's a very good one. It's a grade 2 research order, which is, you know, what we want, and it says, when placed in the order zone, you can draw one and then discard one. So that's already nice, it's a filter, which means you already, we were saying like you know you're going through you know two cards per turn with this you're going through three cards per turn but the draw is going to be random it's not a specific search or like a search from top four or something the way that you would do with Ava skill but it's still a card you go through and lets you ditch cards that you don't need or obscurates that you want to get back or something else like combine rusher which we'll talk about later and then if you have three or more research orders that are set you can soul blast one and choose an opponent's rear guard and bind it outside of regular ragnarok this is the only deck in overdress that can bind opponent's rear guard and that is very huge. In the mirror match, you can bind each other's obscudates so you can't get them back. Against things like Nirvana, if you bind their Verena, the Trickstar goes with it and they cannot get it back, neither with Retsuji or with Nirvana's effect, therefore it is gone for good. Against Buff Saga, you can bind a Trick Moon, which they can no longer call back to countercharge. Against Lyrical Monasterio, you can bind their annoying like 10k, you know, 10k Vanguard booster that you don't want them to use, so their Kyrie only swings for 13. The bind is really important because a lot of decks do have recursion and by being able to shut down the recursion and being able to just like strip them of that really powerful rear guard that they were relying on they can no longer get it back and even against matchups that can't get stuff back it's still removal which is still very strong and the fact that you can technically do this every single turn starting from turn three is also very powerful because that also means you can strip away their guards on their field too if you actually take out one of their big intercepts so of course we're playing four copies of this order as well because we need to it is your best 
control and also in the mirror match if you don't see four of these you are basically in a disadvantage because in the mirror match the person who binds more obscurities is usually the person that wins alternatively it's the person that aggroes harder it kind of depends on who goes first and second and who knows the matchup better the mirror match is honestly pretty hard so that's four of that order then we move on to the brand new card that you guys are getting in english in november which of course is the grade one research order so we are playing four copies of it but we'll talk about it just on its own first so i think it's called like something like the result of the experiment henceforth is what it's called in Japanese. Now, this, of course, has multiple effects. First one is, if your Vanguard is an Eva with a Glitter effect, you can play it. So it has a very specific play condition. And then the Order is on a Continuous effect. All of your Obscudate Rearguards cannot be retired by your opponent's card effects. This, in my opinion, is like the first big point of why this card is so good. Because this means that against matchups like the Sagara, if they Soul Blast you to retire your front row, they don't retire. The Obscudates don't retire. If Gravidia attacks and sacks a bunch of Meteors, those those meteors will not kill your obscurates, they will stick. This does not let them to be retired. They can still be retired by attacks, you can still attack into them, but you cannot retire them by effects, which is again, I keep mentioning these big decks, those like, things like Ravidia are very popular, and therefore, you know, this protects you from that. This also means that you can definitely use obscurates 10k intercept unless they attack into it, because they cannot retire it by an effect. The new Verena that's coming out in set 7 needs to have, you know, like what, one or less of your opponent's rearguards on the board, so if you have this on play and you have two obscurates in play that means they will never get that unless they attack into the obscurates which is also pretty interesting however keep in mind that the obscurates can still be bound they can still be imprisoned they can still go to the bottom of the deck by an effect they can just not be retired which is of course the most common form of removal so that's already a very strong part of the card another thing of course is that it's a grade one which means that you can set this on turn one after searching it with your ride line which is basically what sped up the deck and made it so good being able to have three research orders on turn three is basically what made this deck into a meta competitor because now you can always make sure you have three on turn three and the deck is going to go fast obviously it will get its full power and it's going to get the crit from being called because if you only have two you only get five can obscurate and you also don't get the extra crit which is very important then the second skill is act in the order zone if you have four or more research cards in your order zone you can put this card into your soul to counter charge one and then choose an obscurate from your drop zone and add it back to your hand this thing does so many things right so so once you reach turn four, you can put this into the soul, and then you put so by putting it into the soul, you soul charge one, and you use soul for quite a few effects, like the grade two research. You get to counter charge, which lets you use your AOS skills more aggressively, which is very nice, and you also get an update back from draw. So that this one effect does three things on top of the fact that you know it became faster, it's a research order, and it also doesn't retire your update. So there's six points for why this card is so good. So I think it's a self-explanatory reason why this card. Is so amazing. Sadly, I only have two foils, so I'm playing two of the non foils as well. Now, I've seen some lists that play only three, and I honestly very, very, very greatly disagree with that. Eva is a deck that wants to play the long game, it wants to outgrind your opponent and push them with Eva as an attacker. I forgot to also mention the fact that when you use her first skill to search, she also gets plus 5k. So she's an 18k attacker, which you might be thinking, like, oh, that's not that high, you know, it's not 23 or anything. It's actually pretty awkward because a lot of players they cannot just drop a trigger to guard they have to drop a front to do to pass or they have to drop a trigger plus a 5k so it's still a two card guard so 5k increments on the vanguard circle are actually very very strong and so you can basically play the long game by having your eva multi-attacking you know enabling the multi-attacks with your obscadades and you have a bunch of recurring pieces like the obscadade thanks to this and then every time you play a set order you also get to get combine rush route which we'll talk about next so i'm sorry this card is very expensive and it is a shop tournament promo but it is a super important card. If you're playing Eva, you need four copies of this. It is simply the strongest card that the deck has, and in my opinion, it is much more important to be setting orders every single turn rather than persona riding, because if you can set an order every turn, that means you can use this effect every turn to put it into the soul, counter charge, and also get upgraded back to hand, which means you can keep reusing Eva's skill. Even if you call upgraded from hand by Eva's skill, it's still really good because that's a multi-attack you get out, and sometimes you don't even multi-attack. You just do three attacks, you have an upgraded up front, you attack with Eva to call another one out, and then you have a two crit rear attack, and then they're forced to kind of guard the vanguard if they're at like four damage, and then if you get a crit, you just put in the other rear, so you have two lethal swings every single turn. Because you're thinning the deck, and your chance of hitting crits is actually that consistent. Moving on to the grade twos, our one and only grade two is the Combine Rusher. We're playing four copies of it, but let me talk about the card first. It has two effects. We're going to talk about the second one first. In the drop zone, when you would play in set order from your hand in the order zone, you count plus one and call this card to rear. Very simple effect, but it's very, very powerful, because 
because every single turn that you set a research order from hand, you can counterblast one and basically just get this guy out. So he will be another attacker that you can use and an intercept for 5k that you can also use. And on top of that, he has his first skill, which says when he attacks into a grade 3 or greater unit, keep that in mind, this will not increase power when it attacks a grade 2. If you have two or more set orders in your order zone, he gets plus 10k for that battle. This is really good in Gravidia because of, you know, meteors. This is also good in Orphist if you want to run it in the red line. But in this deck in particular, it's really good because you're setting orders every single turn. And if you don't have enough attackers, which most of the time is going to be just obscurate, to be honest, you can just get this guy back and that's it. If your opponent crits you on turn one, let's say if they go second, you get two damage and if you open two of these in your hand and you discard the first one for the right deck on turn one and you discard the second one for the right deck on turn two, you can now CB2 and call both of them out and rush your opponent and then you get closer to finishing your opponent with the upgrade turn on turn five or turn four, which is really, really good. So with Combine Rusher, we are playing four copies. This card is phenomenal. It is a strong attacker. It is a 20k attacker on its own once your opponent is on grade three. So Sorry, allow me to rearrange them a little bit due to the glare. So as I said, it is a 20k attacker once your opponent's on grade 3. And if you persona it, it's a 30k attacker with an 8k boost, that's 38. You're asking for 250k shields, which is really, really strong. So Combined Rusher is really, really good. This is also another, you know, for in the era mirror, you're going to get this bound sometimes. And then, of course, the best grade 1 in the deck is, of course, Bobble Mine. We're playing four copies of Bobble Mine. This is the best countercharger in all of Brankate. Bobble Mine's effect is very simple. Rigor Circle at the end of the battle, this unit boosted. If you have a set order in your order zone, you can put it to Salt to counter charge one. So for example, if you open up a combined rusher, you can discard it. And then once you ride next to you, you can see you want to, after you set your order to get it back and then call a bubble mine behind it. And then that way you're either attacking for 18 or 28 with the bubble mine boost, which then goes to soul. And you're going to be using that soul for things like the grade two research order. So therefore it was a very good resource you're getting. You're getting both counter blast and soul blast out of this card, which is really, really good. It is just by far the best grade one in my opinion. And if I had, if I could play five or six bubble mines, I probably would. And then we get into the Sentinels, which of course is our other great ones that we are playing. We're playing three copies of the new Sentinel. This is the same one that you guys have in English. It's just the set six. We got a new, new art for PGs. So this is the kind of like if you have two or less, if you have one or less cards in hand, you don't have to discard for the cost Sentinel. So this of course makes sense. And now you're probably going like, oh my god, only three PGs. What are you doing? Well, of course, we are playing one copy of the Elemental Sanctario or whatever that is called. Sorry. Elementario Sanctitude. So this is of course a blitz order they're going to see in almost every single deck going forward because it is played as a PG and everything but grade 4 decks. So like Mahar won't play it, Bastion won't play it, as well as of course Prison won't play it and stuff like that. Kyrie also won't play it. But it was a grade 3 deck and therefore we can use it. So why are we using this as a one of? Well, it's a blitz order, which means that against decks that guard restrict, we don't have to worry about that. So against Flagberg, which is a very popular deck in the current meta, it's pretty good. And of course it says if your opponent's Vanguard has a triple drive icon, so if it's a grade 4 based Basically, you can play this without paying the cost. Otherwise, it is a discard one as long as your Vanguard is grade three or lower in order to be a perfect guard. But then after you perfect guard with it, it vanishes instead of going to the drop zone. So that's a very important point. So four PGs, a very strong point about PGs in this deck is that you can search them with Ava's first skill. So you can always find PGs, which in my opinion, lets you survive against OTs better because by being able to find PGs better than most other decks, you actually have an edge in how you survive against OTs. I think it's just that simple. And of course, this card is just really good against Kyrie, against Mahar, as well as against Flagbark, because that is the strongest guard district deck that we have. We still have a couple more grade ones, and this is a card that is now in a different ratio than it was during my second place Nagoya list where I went undefeated, and it is two copies of the Secondo. Secondo's effect is pretty simple, but it's very cool actually, especially against the prison matchup. When placed on Rearguard Circle, you can choose one card that is not a trigger unit from your drop zone and put it to the bottom of the deck. And if you put a grade three or greater card, you can Soul Blast three to draw one. So of course you don't have to pay the Soul Blast even if you have it, you can choose to, it's an optional part of the cost, but then you won't draw the card, of course, keep that in mind. But of course, the main purpose of this card is to put back obscurates because we don't really want to be calling them from our hand because that does minus one from our hand. We want to call them from the deck. So once it gets to the long game, you do need to rely on the condo to actually find you that. Now you might be thinking, well, then play three, right? If you want to play the long game, you're going to need to see three of them. When I went second place, I actually only played one because I was like most games I managed to finish or I managed to manage my obscurates carefully enough that I don't really feel the need for a second. But after my second place on Nagoya, the deck became a lot more popular and a lot 
people are, will actually playing my build and as a result i felt that i especially in the mirror match i was playing even longer games so i really needed the second second and you could even bump it to three honestly i think even three is not incorrect the other cool thing about it is that you can also put back your persona rides and they will also trigger the draw part of the effect and you can also put back your orders because this just says non-trigger units so if let's say you damage check the blitz and you want it you heal it out you can actually put it back to deck and then have a chance to draw into it or if you've used too many of your research orders and you're all out of them you can actually put it back to the bottom of the deck with secondo and then basically potentially draw into it later down the line and then be able to play an even longer game so Zagondal is a good card, you draw when you need to, um, there, it's just like when you have Surplus Soul and you use a bunch of Bubble Mines as well as got plenty of Persona Rides then you use it. And then my final one up is the, I call her the Mamako, that's her Japanese name. She's basically a uh, common from set 5. She's a 7k grade 1 and her effect is pretty simple, continuous regard circle during your turn, for every set order in your order zone, she gets plus 2k power. Now. You might be thinking, this is such a random card, like it's just a beater, what are you doing with it? Well the thing is, most of the time in this deck you have 3 set orders, and 3 set orders means that she is increasing her power by 6k. 7 plus 6 is 13k. So. The 13k means two things. One, it is a 13k attacker, because once you start running out of attackers or you don't have the CB to pay for the combined rusher anymore, then you actually want to just use her as an attacker. She'll be 13 or 23 on Persona Ride, and that's fine. That will get the little shield out of your opponent's hand that you usually need to kind of just finish the game in the long game. Otherwise, she's a 13k booster behind combined rusher with a 20, 20k attacker already, which makes a 33k column without Persona Ride, which is huge, or a 43k column if you have Persona Ride on. So it's really, really strong. That, that number, every time I attack with that number, my opponent usually goes like, what the hell? Why is it that big? And I'm like, oh, well, this plus this plus that equals 43. Alternatively, there are some games where you don't need to use the grade one research order too much because you don't have that many upscades in the drop zone and you're just getting one back per turn and you don't want to put back any to the bottom of the deck because they're still in the deck and stuff like that. So there are times when you end up with four of the set orders going into your battle phase. And that means that she will be getting plus 8k power, which means that then she is going to be a 15k boost behind an obscadade that is actually going to make a 38k column as well because of the 23 that obscadade is plus the 15 which puts you to 38 if not 48 on persona ride which is also really really good so she's not a nice little flex slot honestly you can play another second if you don't feel safe piling the deck but i just really like her as a backup attacker i used to run two of her but i've decreased her because of how much the mirror has become more popular then for the triggers we are playing of course the brand gate over trigger elder breath elder breath steals games like especially in this deck because you are thinning the deck so aggressively of course you can put this back with secondo it doesn't put back triggers but because you thin the deck so aggressively your chance of hitting the ot is actually quite high and one of the crazy ways that i've won a game thanks to obscurate actually was i called well not thanks to obscurate thanks to the ot is that i called an obscurate off of eva's effect and then i checked first drive check i got a crit gave it all to the obscurate because my opponent pg the attack and then i checked an ot and then my obscurate was already at three crit because of its own effect plus the crit that I checked and as a result it went to six crit with 200 million power and then it basically lethaled my opponent in one attack because they no longer had any PGs in hand and yeah that's just kind of things you can do but even then like even like let's say you can kill your opponent from two with this because if they no guard you swing with the able you get this you now hit for two damage you one of your upgrades is already two crit so that is going to become four and then your other one is going to become two and therefore you are having like two very annoying attacks that they have to deal with so even without checking a crit you can two to six them pretty fast and it's just because of how high the chance to check this is that it's really really strong so yes ot's are a problem but you know for as long as they are legal we're going to be playing them then the other triggers the more regular triggers we're playing two of the regular heals because we are playing two copies of the counter heals so i'm playing two copies of the extra crit counter heal because one this card is really good for the mirror match i actually did a whole video on counter heals recently that i think you should check out because i kind of explained my reasoning for playing this in ava I think running a 1-1 lineup of counter heals is also pretty good because then you also have a big shield against counter heal or against the like restanding decks. And because you can technically search this out if you want to, I personally never would because you want to actually have a heal in your deck if possible. But because you thin the deck so much, you are quite likely to see it. And therefore, even if you run them as one ofs, you are going to see them most likely. So I just find this really good because against Gravidia, it's a big, it's a 25k shield. Again, the effect of this is when you guard with it, if your opponent has a unit with two crit, that gain that extra 
crit from something that is not a trigger, then this gets plus 15k shield, and it has base 10k shield, so 25k shield. And so as a result, you have a 25k shield that is really, really good, because again, 25 plus the 5 is going to make 35k shield with like a combined rusher being in an intercept or something, and when your opponent attacks with an obscudade with an extra crit, and let's say they're on Sunrise, so it's like 33, this one card guards it, which is really good. Against Gravidia, which is swinging for 28, again, this that gained a crit by an effect. You're going to go to 38, you add a 5k to that, you're going to be at 43, which is a 2 to pass. Of course, if they use the double trigger effect, you're probably not going to be 2 to passing them. But for example, if they don't, then it's a pretty good shield. And there's just a bunch of cases, especially against Youth Perk, which still plays Zest at the moment. Um, it is also going to be very good. So that is the heals we're playing. And then I think crits are pretty obvious, but let's go over them anyway before we go over the last trigger, which of course, you know, we have 4 copies of the Dakar Cop. This isn't a must-have, but I do recommend it because there are times when the extra soul is very helpful. Because sometimes I do want to use the secondal draw effect, or I just need the extra soul because of course we're soul blasting for the greater research order as well as for Ava's effect, because she needs to soul blast one and cannabis one for the call effect. So the the Dakar Cop actually is Kind of handy i would pick up if you can but if you don't have it i think you can go with just vanilla crits of course my other four crits are just vanilla so we are playing eight crit that is uncontested in my opinion you have to play eight crit because this deck basically wants to just set up crits on both attackers and you basically you get a crit from a calling one up skidade and you get the second crit from thinning your deck out and checking them so the eight crit i think is pretty self-explanatory i don't think it needs to be debated too much but i hope you know that it is very important and then i'm playing three fronts now some lists you've probably noticed do play draws and I am very much against draws in this deck. I tried them and I decked out basically most of my games. Draws in this deck are unnecessary because you actually plus quite a lot to your hands just by default. You plus with Obscudate, you can plus with Eva skill every single turn and the ride line pluses as well by searching out your orders for you. And as a result while you will usually sit on like six to eight cards in hand four against decks that rush you a little bit usually the hand quality is very high and if you do have the front in hand it's a 20k shield which against quite a few of the decks that just gain like 5k increments is really really good and again the attack power that eva has is usually going to be rear then van and then the two obscudates and this means that this deck is perfectly fitted for fronts because i've actually won games by just like pushing my opponent to five sometimes if i know that they don't need too much cb in their the deck they play and i don't need to be cb denying as much by pushing them to five i then make it so that if i check a front my board is so lethal because one of them has two crit on it and the other one is just swinging for like from 23 to 33 to 43 to 53 if i check like double trigger onto it so fronts are really good please run fronts i really really recommend them and that's actually it for the entire list. Now let me talk about the mulligan a little bit. This mulligan overview should serve for you as a priority checklist in terms of how you should be handling the mulligan. The number one by far most important thing is to have one research order in your hand at the start of the game. So if you don't have a research order in your opening hand of five, you mulligan five. Like I'm not kidding you, there is only one card that you would possibly not throw away and even then having the three research orders is the most important thing in this deck. Decks that run grade fours, they always hard mulligan for the grade fours and then this deck is basically a deck that revolves around the research cards and therefore having the three set up is by far the most important thing you could ask for. So please make sure you have at least one research order. You actually just want one. You don't want to have more. So if you open like three in your opening hand, toss the other two back. I personally like to toss this one back because then I am basically keeping this private information in my hand and then searching these from the ride line, and that way my opponent has a harder time of guessing what's in my hand. There's actually a lot that you can read from your opponent's hand based on their mulligan, and I might make a separate video on that in the future, but if you have both, I would personally keep the grade two more and then search out the grade ones from the ride line. But otherwise, if you just have the grade one, you just keep the grade one and you just have to have one. So that is the biggest priority. But okay, let's say your opening hand already has a resource order, right? So what is the next target that you want to be keeping in your mulligan? Well, actually, it's gonna be the Combine Rusher. Combine Rusher is a card that you want to see early. Combine Rusher, by discarding it for the ride deck cost, you are allowing yourself to Kalos 1 and rush your opponent early, and the entire goal of the deck is to push your opponent to 3 or 4 as early as possible so that you put them into a pressure point with Obscudate and Eva. Think about playing Dimension Place in V Premium or Premium. You are strongest there when your opponent's at like 3 or 4, depending on the format, because then everything comes with a crit and everything has a bunch of pressure. The same logic applies here as well. You want to push your opponent to 3 or 4 as early as possible so that 
you have them kind of in a chokehold where they're just like dropping PGs left and right and guarding with their entire hand and losing pieces. Combined rusher also gives you a huge edge in matchups like Bruce and Bastion where you are able to actually just rush them while they are just saving parts in hand or they don't have any guard in hand because they play grade threes in Bastion. Against Kyrie, this logic also works because a lot of their hand is parts that they want to be calling down off of Melties and stuff like that or using Yuika to bounce itself, you know, like bounce the thing in front of itself and stuff like that. So combined rusher is your second highest priority target. It's actually not the Persona Ride. And after that, that is our next card. Bobo Mine. Bobo Mine is not the Persona Ride still. Bobo Mine is really good because if you open Combine Rusher in your opening hand, Bobo Mine together with it is a really, really good pair because you make an 18k column that now is much harder for your opponent to guard. And of course, if you just line up three Combine Rushers, one defensive trigger is going to shut that down. So your attack pattern is also very important. The Bobo Mine is really good at just refunding the cost of the Combine Rusher immediately. And so as a result, you want to have it in the early hand too. And if you get damage choked at one, Bobo Mine will allow you to maneuver because Bobo Mine will mean that you can use Ava's Act skill and then make a column with anything, whatever you find, let's say, with Bubble Mine to counter charge and then use Ava's own attack skill to then call something out. And you will get damage night at one sometimes, especially if you aggress with combined rushers. And only then, then do I keep the Persona Ride. The Persona Ride is good. It is strong, but it is not the biggest strength of the deck, in my opinion. You will find the Persona Ride naturally because you are thinning your deck so quickly throughout the early stages of the game. You will find it off of Eva's own skill. You will find it by just raw, like raw drawing it. You don't have any like random soul charges in this deck either to just like randomly lose it either. So as a result, you don't need to prioritize the Persona Ride as much in this deck from my experience in playing it. So yes, that is your mulligan guide. This is your priority target. So first, get a research card. Second, get Combined Rusher. Then if you have Combined Rusher, get Bubble Mine. If you don't have Combined Rusher, you are basically throwing everything. Not that isn't your experiment you know that isn't your research order to get the combined rusher but if you have it you want to try to find a bubble mine and then if you have these three go for the eva and then you have some cards that are kind of like a maybe so pgs if you can kind of see what the deck your opponent is playing is for example in top cut you usually by the time you reach top cut you will know what the opponent's deck is then you might want the pg to be kept in your hand early as well because that way by the time you find the second pg off of eva's skill you will have two and that means that you can survive against ot's a lot better I, I think part of the reason why we made it so high in nagoya is because in hands where i had like a research order plus a uh combined rusher and a pg i would keep the pg and then i would actually be able to survive ot turns and that led me to win so the pg is a questionable keep but against decks that play the longer game, especially you do want to keep it sometimes. The one card that you should never keep is Obscudate. Obscudate, there's only one matchup where you're going to keep it, and that is against Prison. Because against Prison, when the user decides to pink, you're going to want to toss it into your opponent's Prison and then free it on your turn 3 in order to have a free 2 crit attacker. That's basically how easy it is. So it's only against that matchup where you want to keep the Obscudate. Against everything else, you want to toss it back into the deck because you want to be calling Obscudate out from Ava's effect. And if you draw too many of them early, that means you're going to be calling them from hand all the damn time. And we do not want to be doing that. For the Ride deck discards, is actually also pretty straightforward. Number one Ride deck discard is going to be always Combined Rusher. That just goes without saying. Discarding triggers for the Ride deck is fine, but keep in mind that when you discard a trigger for the Ride deck, that tells your opponent that your hand is full of good cards, which means that they might start aggressing to try to get those good cards out of you. So keep that in mind. It's a very important interaction that is often overlooked. Another card you can actually toss if you open too many of it, or even one of it in your opening hand, is Obscudate. Because Obscudate, you can get back with the Grade 1 Research Order. So if you have just one in the drop zone, it's actually not that big of a deal. So those are kind of like your best two drop targets for the ride deck. If you have too many Persona rides, then of course you can also drop the Persona ride. That is actually also completely fine. But that is my general list of recommendations of what you want to drop. Be very, very careful about discarding the orders for the ride deck because you play eight, and by the time you'll notice at one point you're like, damn, I want to play a longer game and I want to grind out some a bit longer, but I'm running out of research orders and I cannot set them anymore and I need to start top decking them. And then you realize, oh wait, I discarded them for the early game and now I don't have any left in the deck and my secondo is already being used to put obscurate back and now I'm in trouble. So always count your research orders at all times of the game to make sure you still have some of the deck to actually draw into one. All right, and now let me show you a quick gameplay demo of how the deck wants to play in the early turn. So let's just shuffle the deck a little bit to make sure it's full randomized and then take a look at the kind of step-by-step -step mulligan as well as step-by-step -step ride deck and kind of early game maneuvers that you can do depending on how you open because obviously how you open in this deck will largely actually change how you play throughout the game and how you get to your win con which against as i mentioned before is getting your opponent to three or four and then pressuring them all the damn time so i'll put my deck to the side you can kind of barely see it here in the frame and then we're going to of course be drawing our five cards here as well 
this deck does not really mind if it goes first or second, which is kind of one of the crazy things. Like, going first, of course, is better because you get to aggress much faster, but going second, I feel like it feels a lot less bad compared to some other decks. All right, so let's quickly use this coin. This is, of course, one of the coins that I've shown before from Carfighters Underground, which is a cool little store that sent me some playmats in the past. I really like the chip, so I kind of like using it for heads and tails. Let's say this logo is heads and this is tails. So if we get heads, we're going to go first, and if not, we're going to go second. So we're going to get a head, so we're going to go first. Let's get it. So we're going to draw our five cards and take a look at the opening hand. So as you can see, here this is actually a pretty terrible opening hand and you might be thinking oh i would want to at least keep the pg but we don't have any research cards and we just have a bunch of crits and obscurates which we don't need and you have to keep in mind that by dropping two pgs here to the bottom of the deck and the mulligan you are actually not going to have a chance to see any other pg for a while so see which matchup you're playing against against certain matchups you will actually want to keep this just in case but generally speaking having a research order is so important that i would personally against an unknown opponent drop five here so we're going to put the five to the bottom of the deck and then draw another five cards and let's see what we get. We get two research orders. We're going to get another crit as well as a bubble mine. So this hand is kind of cool. We don't have combined rusher to make the bubble mine work, which is where if you don't draw combined rusher by the second turn, you can discard a bubble mine for your third ride deck discard if you don't get damage tonight. But we do want to keep it in some early turns. So we did our mulligan. Let's shuffle the deck real quick in order to actually get ready to get started. And as we're going first, it's still going to be a pretty good matchup for us overall against virtually anything that we run into. So deck is shuffled so let's take a look at it so of course we're going to stand up vanguard we're going to put the ava here as a grade zero and then draw for turn and see what we draw into we're going to draw into a pg so that did manage to come up eventually so here you might be thinking okay we have Two cards with 15k shield, the PG and a bubble mine. We don't have combined rush, or what are we discarding? So these two research cards, you're gonna want to keep them because you need four to get the grade one active. And so by having two in hand, you basically don't need to worry about drawing into one in the late game or having to like find one off of Ava on turn three. You're gonna find better pieces. So here we are gonna give up a lot of information. Let's discard the critical trigger, which of course tells our opponent that we have a very good parts heavy hand. They might be thinking, oh, they have a bunch of orders and stuff like that. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna actually ride into the grade one Ava, who will then search our first research card. So we already have two in hand. So here, in order to show as much as as little information as possible, we're going to search for the grade one. So let's find the grade one research order. All of our obscurates are stuck at the bottom, which is not great. So we're going to find the grade one research order, add it to hand, and then of course just shuffle the deck around in order to you know add the randomization so those obscurates aren't all stuck together, which is kind of concerning that they all kind of ended up like that, which is not great. So we're going to just kind of shuffle, uh, do a bit of shuffling, and then of course this goes to hand. But then we immediately want to set it. Don't forget to set your orders. You need to have them in place play it for the effects to go off. And as we went first, there's not much else to do, so we're going to just pass here, and then our opponent's going to probably deal us one damage. We get a heal, which is a defensive, so that means that we are going to be taking less uh, attacks, so we might not even have to guard anything here if they just swung with Vanguard and pass. So let's say next turn, we're going to take our turn, we're going to draw one. Now we got a third research card, so you might be thinking here, okay, this is surely where you discard one. Actually, that is correct. So what you can do here, if you want to give out as little information as possible, you can actually discard the grade one research order, and then search out another one. So I think here it is quite optimal to discard the grade one research, and then we're going to, of course, first ride up the grade two and then use our effect to find another copy of the grade one research and then this way we're giving out as little information as possible while setting up our turn so our opponent can probably guess that because we searched out two of the grade ones we do have a grade two not actually it's not because of that, that they can assume that we have a grade two they can assume that because we discarded the grade one now there are times when you would have wanted to actually keep this grade one in hand and discard the grade two instead because sometimes going first your opponent doesn't call anything so if you're playing against bruce for example they usually don't call anything on turn two so in your first turn three even if you play this you won't have anything to bind so you're actually better off playing this on turn three again because that gets you your three orders in play without necessarily having to worry about that but let's just say your opponent's playing something that does actually cause something to the field or they just don't know how it works that still happens sometimes so here of course we can now attack we don't have any other attackers to make and we don't want to call bubble mine in case it gets sniped by something that we're playing against so we're going to attack drive check get a combined rusher which is very good which means we can actually put it to the drop next turn so now let's say we take another attack we do want two cb on turn three this is very important you want the one cb be on turn two because in, even if you don't have combined rusher in hand let's say like we did last turn if you top deck it for the turn draw you can ditch it still for the right deck and then call it out which is very important and then we would be able to get back the cc with a bubble mine so here we're going to want to take this damage and so we get a research card so keep in mind with this we have two in the order zone one in the damage one in the drop zone that's four publicly out and we have two in hand which means there's only two left in deck so they thin out pretty quickly and then let's say here you know just to kind of stay on two we don't want to take too much damage you could still guard but let's say this turn if you didn't have 
bubble mine you actually want to take this third damage because here because we have bubble mine what we can do next turn is ditch this pay the cb1 to call it out and then we can use ava skill for cb1 and then use bubble mine to enable bob you know ava's other skill so here we can guard this attack with the 15k let's say they got a trigger or something and then we're gonna get our turn back here and then draw one we got another bubble mine it's actually a pretty good card to get so we're gonna ditch the combined rusher here for the ride deck cost and then we're gonna ride into the grade three ava now of course first we have to play our orders we're gonna play the grade two research and its effect will allow us to draw one card and then discard one so we draw a third bubble mine surely we don't need that many we're gonna discard it for the cost and then because we have three we can now soul blast one and bind one of our opponent's cards which is of course very very important and now don't forget this timing you just set an order card which is when combined rusher is gonna go off which means that now you can cb1 and call the combined rusher out very important thing with combined rusher is that if you are to discard it for the grade two researches effect because it lets you draw one discard one you cannot call out the combined rusher that you discarded for this cost because that combined rusher did not see this order being set it was already in the drop after it was set and you're resolving its effect so you know just keep that in mind that you have to have it in the drop before you resolve this effect so we cb1 we called out combined rusher now we're going to use eva to cb1 and look at top three cards of our deck let's see what we find we find a crit we find a pg which is pretty good another crit this is pretty simple like basically when you see triggers you're going to want to just take the non-triggers so we're going to take the grade one sanctitude of course is a very good card and put the crits to the bottom of the deck and stack them in any order so that's going to be just that and here our attack partner is a little bit awkward because we basically will not be able to make use of the front we have to put the bubble mine here and then basically enable our cattle blast so we're going to swing with this column because when first is just 18 and then use the bubble mine to put it into the soul and counter charge one in order to enable for eva's on attack effect so we're going to attack here use eva's effect to cattle blast one as well as soul blast the bubble mine we just put into the soul virtually we're using the cost the bubble mine gave us to you know just do stuff and here you can kind of look through your deck see what's still in kind of see like oh the ot is still in and there's like a bunch of other cards and stuff like that so i like to use obviously you can't rearrange don't rearrange cards sorry uh, i thought i'd grab the <laughs> hopes get it there um you know you can grab the card you want and then you can also take some time to look through the deck to see what your chances of triggering are and stuff like that um while you thin out the deck for the one upscadade which of course is very powerful so this will be our first up upscadade which is really good so we're going to be calling it out over here and it's going to gain the extra crit from its effect so now we get our twin drive and this is an 18k attack because of course we use the first effect so we're going to get our first check it's going to be an ot that's not something i expected but again this actually pushes us to four crit which is pretty insane uh, we're going to draw from that and then second second check we're going to get the persona ride which is also pretty good and then of course this will swing and probably get pg because that's usually what happens the game continues we usually will take a damage around here and we, you want to be careful because you want to stay within your heal range sorry my battle is really squished here because i don't want to zoom in too much but basically you want to stay within heal range at all times and keep your opponent out of heal range so if your opponent's right now at three you can afford to go to four and then even if you don't get defensives you can now basically guard with things like the obscurate and the combined rusher and then just add some extra shield onto it whether that's a front or whatever you know you can just kind of you know discard them for as you need to um, and just pay the shield like that and then next turn comes around and you're basically going to get another turn so we're going to draw you're going to get another combined rusher which is nice we don't have to discard anymore so we're going to ride into the eva here to get the persona ride and draw a card and we draw into an upgrade which is actually really really good or it would have been really good last turn you would like to have two upgrades because what we can do here now basically is we're going to go with the grade two research we're going to draw one and then we're going to draw into a heal that's actually quite fine and then discard one of our combined rushers and then we're going to soul blast one for the cost of the grade two research to bind one of our opponent's cards and so now what we can do is quite a few things we can cb1 for the combined rusher that we just played and this allows us to of course you know uh, not call out the one we just discarded we have to call out the one we discarded for uh or intercepted with earlier so we call that out this is now going to be a 30k attacker we can use eva skill on top of that to cb1 now and look at four cards which is really cool so we're going to look at one two three as well as four so there are times when you will have four triggers there this will happen sometimes i uh, generally speaking take the one with the highest guard value so i usually take fronts first and then i'll take a crit if i have to so we're gonna put the crits back this does mean we have quite a few crits in deck which is totally fine and so here of course you can you have two choices first you definitely want to call this upscalate out um not necessarily right now it depends on how you're going to sequence this this bubble mine is going to come out to make a good column but here it kind of depends on if you want to use this grade one research yet or not because you do have one upscalate in the drop zone which is an actually you know a plus to your hand but that means that next turn when you're going to use your research you know or when you're going to use your eva if you don't find another research you're only going to look at three cards and because you already have an upscalate in hand you can technically call this out and then attack with this column first get the counter charge and then call another upscalate all over this rusher in order to have two upscalates lined up and then have the extra crit but in a like a typical game plan you're going to basically be using this also make sure to not use too many of the grade one researches uh to still have the uh protection effect live at all times to 
two, basically put it to soul, counter charge one, and get the upgrade back to your hand. So with this, now we can call this upgrade out, and this way the, the one that we drew is still private information. They don't know that yet, so that's also very important. So the attack pattern is going to go like this. You're going to swing with this. This is 30k plus 8, so 38. So you're going to use the bubble mine. You don't have to. Sometimes you can swing without boosting. So this is just 30, and then you're going to boost on the bigger attack. And then we're going to swing. We're going to once again pay counter blast 1, and then of course soul blast 1 in order to find another upgrade from our deck. And you can kind of see, again, we are slowly, slowly thinning through and just finding more and more triggers. And, you know, we're going to call it out, get that extra crit on the only one that got called out. Of course, the one on the left that we called from hand does not have the extra crit. And look at this. We're already on turn four here. The cards in deck are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 20, we're going to be down to 18 after we drive check. So that's actually very huge because we are going through the deck so quickly that by turn four, we're already more than halfway into it. And so here, of course, this combined rusher is going to retire and now we're going to do our drive check. First check is a front, which is of course really big, especially if you rushed a little bit. Second check is going to be a crit. This is what I'm saying. Like this is a very high probability. So now you can put the crit onto this attacker and these are both swinging. This one got the front on it first, right? So it's 23, 33% right, 43. And then you can get the extra trigger here. So this is 53. So this is just so huge. And it goes to show that this is kind of like the loop that you go through every turn of just using upscaling and combined rusher and bubble mine and Ava to just keep pressuring your opponent like this and force them to guard a bunch and just attack 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 and basically defend 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 and just do all of this deck thinning which of course eventually leads to your victory and so that's going to do it for this deck profile very long very in-depth for eva i think this deck is very well positioned this current meta i didn't even talk about the matchups too much like you have good matchups against bastion and bruce because you can rush with combined rusher you don't get retired by stuff like ravidia you don't get retired by buff sagaras you can bind nirvanas and their verinas and stuff like that if they don't know how to play the matchup so overall this deck is really well positioned this current meta and i wish you guys that are trying to hunt for this promo all the best of luck in november when it comes to the english stores because it took me quite a while i was going to tournaments basically every day sometimes like two or three tournaments a day just to have a chance to get this promo from the promo pack that you guys are getting english too because this promo is everything for this deck and honestly it is really worth because also going to all these tournaments helped me practice it helped me train and helped me improve so with that if you like the video please do give it a like if you want to see me play test and prepare for my big events and also see how this deck plays on my twitch stream you can check me out on twitch.tv slash different fight and of course give me a follow on twitter if you want to see more event updates as well as early preview to content and just stuff I do in my daily life as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. But anyway, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.